I feel really underdressed. Could you take your tie off? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Dylan. I'm here with Dr. Nate G, Dr. Nathan Groschfeld of the Fasting Escape, a new fasting center. Tell us about your center first and then we'll... Dylan, it's great to be here. I've, we've actually taken a lot of questions from Dylan on the podcast. So it's <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, so so I run the Fasting Escape. It's a small four bed, uh, four bed retreat center. It's a little health center. Uh, it's a fasting center where people can come and reboot and recharge. So the, the modern world is filled with all kinds of what Dr. Lyle and Dr. Goldhammer call pleasure traps. And... Uh, this is this can be as much as uh, eating super health, super unhealthy. So things like uh, uh, high cr calorie processed foods. Uh, it can be alcohol. It can be nicotine. It can be tobacco. It can be it can be other types of things uh, that can, can that can distort our perception of where where we want to go as far as health goes. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also it's it's very normal nowadays to be hopped up on coffee and get sleep deprived. And so what we offer, what Fasting Escape offers, is a place to come and reboot and reset and to do through water fasting. So uh, people come there to do a water fast, it could be a few days, sometimes a few weeks, sometimes a little longer depending on what they're coming in with. And mainly we see people with type two diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, people are overweight and people are feeling run down and they kind of know what they need to do uh, as far as diet, sleep and exercise goes, but it's just hard to get that first push. Right. Uh, this, is, this is what we call breaking a cycle. So we can get into a negative cycle constantly where there we might just know, okay, tomorrow I need to just eat some good healthy food and I need to go to bed on time. And no matter what we think about that, it just doesn't happen. And so this can spiral out of control where some people can be doing it for months and months and even years and even decades. And so fasting escape is a way that, that if, if you're in this negative cycle that you can come in, do a water fast, get some reboot, reset, get your taste buds sensitive, right. get some sleep, uh, get some sleep and rest, and then you go back home, and now all of a sudden you've got that momentum going. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's different about yours compared to like True North, which is more of a larger facility with 50, 60 people, yours is a beautiful home with only a few bedrooms, so it's a much smaller, good for introverts yeah. type of setting, right? Yeah, Dr. Lyle calls this an introvert's paradise. <laughs> so, uh, so we're about 10, 15 times smaller than True North because we're just getting started. So we got four beds available uh, and I live on site. And so people come in, they, the, the bedrooms are, the, every bedroom is a private bedroom with a private bathroom and a walk-in closet inside the room. And so it's more private, more relaxed. There's a couple of different areas that people can socialize in. Uh, uh, that, you know, I do a talk there a couple times a week. There aren't as many classes, so there, I do a talk a couple times a week. There's a yoga, meditation, stretching class once a week. And once in a while we have some cooking classes, cooking demos. Mm -hmm. uh, but mostly it's for, for resting and relaxing, rejuvenating. Uh, there's DVDs and TVs and you know, cable and high speed internet in every room. So people are able to watch a lot of the documentaries and a lot right. of the movies and health, health information DVDs and, and, uh, and, and videos like that you put out and such. Uh, so they're able to do that and kind of do a little self-study as well. And then I'm available for questions when I check people uh, every day. So do you have a staff that's cooking the food? So I have a chef who does cook the food, oh, cool. uh, and but she's not there every day. Uh, and so when she's not there, I'm cooking the food and making it for everybody. So nice. it's a lot of fun. Uh, I, I like I like making healthy food, and it helps me eat healthy. So uh, the running joke between the patients there is that I actually they, they know how open I am with regards to how much flavor I want in my food. Mm -hmm. And the running joke is that I started the center uh, so that I can have a chance to actually eat healthy. So, <laughs> <laughs> But you've been doing this for a while. I mean, mm -hmm. we're pretty young and we got into this at a pretty young age. Most people have hit a pretty significant health scare themselves before they kind of get the sense knocked into them and, yeah. and get started with all this. How did you get started? Um, so I actually had the same thing. I just, I guess I was lucky or unlucky enough to get it sooner. So uh, when I was about 20 years old, uh, I started to develop a little bit of health problems because of all the fast food and all the stuff I used to eat that wasn't conducive to health, wasn't sleeping, drinking coffee. Uh, I was exercising just fine, but that, that was the only thing that I was doing. Uh, and so uh, my grandmother told me about True North Health Center. She is a National Health Association member. She's been you know, involved in the natural health hygiene movement forever. She's a chiropractor as well. Oh, cool. And so I went to True North as a patient, did a fast. Uh, I had been struggling to eat healthy what I thought was healthy. And I just wasn't happening just because I didn't have, I didn't have a, a compass. I didn't know which way to go. And so I kept spinning my wheels. And even when I did know where to go, it was just difficult to do it. So I went and did a fast. I didn't last that long, mm -hmm. but, but, uh, but I did a fast and that was my turning point where my, I got enough rest. My, my condition actually short enough fast that I did. I got lucky that I was younger and it hadn't been happening for decades and decades, but I did my fast. Uh, my health problems slowly went away. 
uh, and and then I was back on the diet. And I remember thinking to myself like, okay, this is there's something to this. Uh, I want to do this. So when I finished my uh, when I finished school, I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna make make a way to get to this. Mm -hmm. So yeah. When I was getting unhealthy, you know, I had done vegan for three years, mm -hmm. and I was my weight was going up, my blood pressure was going up, my cholesterol was going up. What kind of conditions were you experienced kind of similar, not not like chronic yet, but mm -hmm. getting serious? So the main thing was that I had a uh, I had hypothyroidism. I had okay. an autoimmune disease in my thyroid called Hashimoto's, mm -hmm. and I had uh, I had uh, a small tumor in my neck, uh, and so this was on my thyroid gland, and so it looked like all the food and all the all the processed chemicals and preservatives and all those things uh, led to that because you know I, I ate all of that you know with, with no 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 small amount of it mm -hmm. uh, and so so that was it was really scary because when I went to the doctor to figure it out uh, they really didn't they were trying their best but they really didn't have the answers that I was looking for and they were I thought they were simple questions which is what's causing this and what am I doing to cause this and if if we don't know the cause uh, and we do surgery or whatever uh, therapy you want, won't it come back in a different way? And to me, those seemed like simple questions, but those were actually much tougher questions than the doctor could answer. And so they would give me physiological questions. Oh, well, what's going on is they would just explain the physiology behind the symptoms uh, and the, the problem, not really what was the cause of the problem. So to me, you know, I was coming from an electrical engineering background, and so it was just, you know, it, it was like somebody watching CSI and wanting the police to like, you know, put together a crime scene just like CSI. And so to, that, that was what the doctor was saying. It's like, well, it's not that simple. And in my mind, it's like, well, it is that simple. Mm -hmm. When I went to True North, it was that simple. It, it was like, okay, this is what you do. You eat healthy, live healthy, and you give your body the best chance that it has to heal itself. And if you can't completely heal itself, hey, you did your best. You know, we, we keep eating healthy. That, it doesn't change anything about the fact that we need to keep doing healthy things. Right. Even if you're not going to be in perfect health, you're going to do the things that will get you closest to the perfect health right. as you possibly can. I, I look at I look at this just to go back to what I said earlier too. Is is let's say you've got a kid who's, who struggles in school, just they may not have as mat natural ability as somebody else. You still tell them, uh, you still encourage them to study, you still encourage them to try their hardest, uh, regardless of the results. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know a lot of the times we're we're caught up in in results oriented thinking, which is. Hey, if I if I if my my pressure didn't come down exactly right in two weeks, then I shouldn't be on the diet. It's like no, you, you really should still be eating healthy. Let your body do what it needs to do. And if there's a long-standing significant problem, then we explore what's going on and see maybe there's something we're missing. But in general, we want to do the right stuff uh, as as long as we can, as much as we can. Mm -hmm. What have you found? Obviously, it's inevitable that some of the people that come to the fasting escape and go home aren't going to stick with the healthy food. Mm -hmm. It's just how it works. Right. What are you finding is the hardest? Are you hearing from these people after? Or what are you seeing that they're failing at uh, most often? Yeah, I think I think this is this is actually has. I personally believe that this has nothing to do with the lack of character on people's parts. I think this is just how strong the pleasure trap is. Yeah. Uh, we don't live in a world that's conducive to health. Uh, if we did, then we wouldn't have any problems. Uh, I think that, that we're gonna have some people that are gonna struggle more than others, like people who are more extroverted. They're gonna want it, they're gonna find satisfaction in their life when they're around other people. And unless you hang around conferences, people like you and, and other, other healthy individuals, and you can make a social circle that are only individuals like that, then you're gonna struggle. That's just, there's no way around it. So uh, if you're gonna be, if you're a naturally pleasant and agreeable person, you're gonna struggle because the minute someone asks you to have some food that they made you just off the program, it's not gonna taste very good. So the minute they ask you uh, to, to have some health, unhealthy food, you can't say no if someone's right. a naturally agreeable and pleasant person. There are natural weaknesses in our personalities uh, that, that, that are gonna be different for everybody. So if someone's naturally agreeable and pleasant, they're gonna have a harder time saying no. If someone's more extroverted, they're gonna have trouble because they're gonna find a lot of happiness going to social events where there might be a lot of food and, and lifestyle things that are not conducive to health. Uh, if someone's very open to new experience, they're gonna they're gonna get a lot of life satisfaction from seeking novelty in a lot of areas of their life, which will expose them to a lot more pleasure traps. Right. So, uh, my my attitude about this is, hey, we are who we are. You're our personality, broken. we're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. This is this is who you are, and it, this is the world. So so if health is such a priority for you that that overrides everything else, then you make it a priority to set up your environment so it's easy to eat healthy. Right. Uh, and so that's. What happens when my practice, people will call me once in a while and they'll tell me, I, I tell people when they leave, call me if there's any problems. And people will call me 
if they start getting out of balance after they leave, and we say, okay, go back to normal. Get some sleep, get some exercise, eat a, eat a salad, eat a healthy meal, do, do something healthy, and just slowly, just slowly walk your way back to health. You know, there's no quick fixes. We just walk up the stairs. We can't leap up the staircase. We just gotta go one step at a time. When I got started, the, getting the mechanics of eating healthy food isn't terribly challenging. It can be challenging to neuroadapt your taste buds and find healthy food actually tastes good, but it wasn't all that mechanically challenging. It's actually much simpler to cook like us mm -hmm. than it is to cook fancy standard American fare, which requires all kinds right. of shenanigans in the kitchen. But, so what I learned over time was that it was really understanding the way my personality works and how other people's personalities work and, and being able to wrap my head around sort of the psychology of it. And one thing you do great with Dr. Doug Lyle is the Beat Your Genes podcast. Mm -hmm. And you talk all about evolutionary psychology and how our psychology, not just about healthy food and everything, but about all the different facets of life and how psychology affects it. Tell us just a quick overview of your podcast. I love it and where we can find it. And I also want to know how we can find Fasting Escape. Sure. Uh, so the Beat Your Genes podcast is uh, it's a little project that, I, that we started about three and a half years ago. Uh, and it, it came about because I was too cheap to pay Dr. Lyle for, for an hour long consultation. I had some questions for him. And I thought, you know, uh, and I didn't want to admit that I had questions. And I didn't want to see the typical psychologist because I didn't, I didn't have any traumas. I didn't have any problems. I just wanted to, another brain to help me solve a particular issue that I had, just a question that I had about life and whatever. So, so I called Dr. Lyle and said, you know, what if we do a little podcast talking about your ideas? So at True North Health Center, uh, when I was working there, I would peek in and, and sit at Dr. Lyle's lectures every week. And it really was interesting because he approaches these problems and these, these questions about life in such a unique way that I, I, couldn't, I couldn't, uh, couldn't get enough. Yeah. And so, and this theme that he kept kind of weaving into all of his talks was beat your genes, beat your genes. So it turns out that our genes, genetically speaking, the purpose of life is to maximize the ability to reproduce and to, reproduce, uh, and to maximize our, our uh, survival. And so this is what our genes are encoded to do. All of our behavior is guided towards uh, a way to increase our reproduction and in increase our survival. But that's not the same thing as feeling the moods of happiness throughout our lives. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they're aligned. So like if someone works really hard, accomplishes a goal and they get a lot of credit for it, now everyone's clapping at them and, and thanking them for everything, that, that's earned. They feel happy as a result. But, uh, but that's not always the case. Case in point with diet and lifestyle. You may, our genes are misguiding us. We are designed by nature to eat the most richest food in our environment. And so back a thousand generations ago, that was totally fine. But today, it's not the case. And so we have to learn how to beat our genes so that we can feel the moods of happiness. And so this podcast, we don't talk about health very much, but we talk about other ways that we can beat our genes. So things in romance, uh, things with dating, uh, things with our friends, our jobs, our lives, our relationships, friendships. So, so this, this podcast, we talk about how to find happiness in the modern world. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's, it, you can look at it, it's called Beat Your Genes. And that is on iTunes, it's on, on any of the, like Spotify, it's on any, any uh, podcast app. We also record live, so we have live callers sometimes. Uh, so you just, uh, just visit our website, beatyourgenes.org, awesome. and you can figure out, uh, find out the phone number for that. And then the Fasting Escape website? Yeah, Fasting Escape is fastingescape.com. Perfect. And just go there and you can learn all about us. It's great to finally meet you. I've been listening to your voice for years, but now we finally met. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. It's all great right, to be here. Good to meet you. Yeah, thanks.